Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is the match day six review. The final match day of the UEFA Nations League group stage matches. Holy crap, what a road it's been. The final match day is split up into two days. The first day has just ended. And as always, I'm gonna be looking at all the results with you. Some results analyzed a bit more than others. Today's been one hell of a roller coaster. Lots of crazy score lines. Honestly, most of the score lines in UEFA Nations League were not very drastic, but today, that all changed. Starting off massive with Andorra versus Latvia. Latvia smashed Andorra 5-0. Their last two goals being penalties. And Andorra gets a red card in the 89th minute. Andorra still were able to get some opportunities in there, but they just weren't clinical enough. Latvia absolutely killed it. Good job to them. Was not expecting this kind of result. The other match in this group, Malta vs. Pearl Islands, is not as exciting as that Latvia match finishes 1-1. But this means now that Pearl Islands officially are undefeated in this group stage and they sit at first in this group. Looks like they're gonna be promoted, so good job to them. Three wins, three draws, no losses. Malta at second with nine points, and Latvia's massive 5-0 win doesn't really do anything for them. That was their first win the entire Nations League. One win, four draws, one loss. And Andorra are in last with just two points. Taking a look at Gibraltar versus Liechtenstein. Finishes 1-1 with an early own goal and a 44th minute goal from Liechtenstein. Gibraltar had zero shots the whole match and didn't look that dominant, but due to that own goal, they were able to equalize. Gibraltar were also undefeated in this UEFA Nations League run. Two wins, two draws, no losses. Liechtenstein are in second with five points, and San Marino finished third with two draws and two losses. Now taking a look at Montenegro versus Cyprus, massive result, 4-0 win for Montenegro. Looking at the stats, it all looked pretty even. Montenegro with the slight advantage, and they still managed to destroy Cyprus. Jovicic with the goal, Boljevic with the brace, Missing Ivanovic was no big deal for this side. Bravo. The other match in this group, Luxembourg versus Azerbaijan, is not as exciting. Finishes nil-nil, despite Luxembourg's pretty decent stats for this match. Despite there being a lot of opportunities, the match still finishes goalless. Luxembourg had an overall decent run, but this is a bit of a disappointing result for them. However, they get second in this group. Montenegro in first with 13 points, though. Luxembourg with 10. Azerbaijan third with 6. Awesome job, Montenegro, for boss in this group. I also wasn't expecting Luxembourg to do this well, so... I'm impressed. Now let's take a look at Croatia versus Portugal. Kovacic had a superb display, got a brace in this match, but Roll gets that red card, which does score us over. Ruben Diaz is able to score after that. Joao Felix gets on the score sheet as well, and then Ruben Diaz gets a goal in the last minute from a Liva Kovic f up. Come on, I was pretty hopeful about this match. Croatia were looking pretty strong at first, but I was questioning their lineup. I mean, they put Pasalic at center forward. Brilliant player, but Center forward, Kovacic puts off the attacking display regardless, so good job to him. Very happy to see that. Liva Kovic is a great keeper as well, but what the hell was that? Definitely cost us the game. That was literally in the 90th minute. We could have drawn. No. And the other pro is Croatia did not finish last in this group, even though they lost this match. One win and five losses is still not good, though. As Sweden lost to France 4-2, both Croatia and Sweden have one win and five losses. But due to that tiny goal differential, only from negative 8 to negative 7, Croatia are able to stay in Ligue A. That is some of the finest luck I've seen. So I'm really disappointed about Croatia right now. I mean, they should be better than this, but... At the same time, I'm super relieved. Anyway, going back to France versus Sweden. France put on a decent display, 4-2. Giroud with the brace, Pavard with the goal, and Kingsley Coman with the last minute goal. Sweden get an early goal and a late goal, but it's just not enough. And France, as expected by most people, won the match. France absolutely killed this group. They finished with five wins and one draw, no losses. Portugal, four wins, one draw, one loss. But yeah, it looks like France make it to the final four. Now, this is a result I know no one predicted. Spain versus Germany, 6-0 thrashing. Look at those stats. 23 shots versus two. 10 shots on target versus zero. 70% possession versus 30. 6-0. Unfortunately, Croatia can relate though. Morata early goal. Torres hat trick. Wow, I really thought it would be close. Maybe a draw, maybe a Spain win if I were to make a prediction but not 6-0. Not only is this a massive score gap between the two huge sides, this also puts Spain at definite first now with 11 points, while Germany have nine, still holding on to second. However, Ukraine versus Switzerland was not able to happen this week as one of the players got coronavirus. Similar situation with Norway versus Romania. If Ukraine managed to win this match and somehow do solid, like get like a 3-0, 4-0 win, they could potentially top Germany for that second place spot. 
due to the goal differentials. They're sitting at third with six right now. Switzerland are in last. I'm really curious to see what happens with Ukraine versus Switzerland right now. This outcome could be massive and a huge disappointment for Germany. Obviously, this won't compare to Germany beating Brazil 7-1 because that was in a World Cup semi-final. But this is just still quite embarrassing. You'd expect a lot more from this German side. And yeah, because of that Ukraine versus Switzerland match being canceled, those are the only eight matches that are played today. Almost everything is coming tomorrow. So finally, all of the Nations League group stage matches have ended. We can finally take a look at everything. And again, a lot of crazy results happened. I wouldn't have expected at all. Lots of interesting turnarounds. Get ready. First, let's take a look at Kazakhstan versus Lithuania. Lithuania win this match 2-1. Kazakhstan get a red card, which definitely doesn't help them. Two goals late in the first half from both sides, and then Lithuania get a 94th minute goal. The other match in this group, Albania versus Belarus. Albania get an impressive win. They win this match 3-2, all of their goals being in the first half. This is a big match for them as they were competing for first place of Belarus. They end up getting that first place spot with 11 points, while Belarus had 10 in second. Lithuania at third with eight, and Kazakhstan in last with four. So those first three teams had a super narrow point gap, but Albania managed to get it at the end, so bravo to them. Moving on to Armenia versus North Macedonia. Armenia win this match 1-0. It's massive stuff for them as they take over Macedonia for that first place spot. They're in first with 11 points, Macedonia in second with nine. That was a big match for both of these sides, just like in the previous group with Albania versus Belarus, and Armenia killed it. North Macedonia still looked like a decent side if you look at the stats, but Armenia were just able to pull through. And the other match in this group, Georgia versus Estonia, finishes nil-nil, which just has both these teams finishing third and fourth in this group. Israel versus Scotland now. Israel win this match 1-0, and you would expect Zahavi would be on the score sheet because he's been killing it for Israel, but it's not him. It's Solomon in the 44th minute. Scotland had a lot of opportunities as well, but they just couldn't score at the end of the day. Decent job from Israel. I knew they had some kind of magic in them. I thought they'd be able to beat Czech Republic, but they didn't. And they managed to get a win against a solid side like Scotland. The other match in this group, Czech Republic versus Slovakia. Czech Republic win this match 2-0. A narrow point gap again for the first three teams. All the first three teams had two losses each. But Czech Republic had the most wins, four wins. That gives them that first place spot. Scotland in second with 10, Israel in third with eight, and Slovakia in last with four. By the way, I'll probably do a reaction to my group stage predictions for another video, just because there's a lot more to cover in this one. I'd rather save it for a whole new video. Next up, Ireland versus Bulgaria. This match finishes nil-nil. Both these sides had a pretty disappointing Nations League run this year. Only one shot on target the whole match, and that one shot was from Bulgaria. The other match in this group, Wales versus Finland. Wales win this match 3-1, solid performance. The red card on Finland definitely didn't help them because it was in the 12th minute, and yeah, those stats. Wales definitely dominated, and they finished first in this group with 16 points. Finland in second with 12. So these sides were definitely the most dominant because Ireland Bulgaria finished last. Ireland with three points and Bulgaria with two. Next up we got Greece versus Slovenia. Greece get a red card in the 90th minute. And other than that, nothing else happens. Nil-nil. Greece looked more dominant in the stats, but they still couldn't score. These definitely were both the more solid sides in this group. And it was a big match for them as they were battling for that first place spot. But Slovenia get on top at the end of the day with 14 points. Greece in second with 12. Kosovo get their first win in the Nations League against Moldova. Lots of red cards. There was a, another late red card in the 85th minute. So yeah, Kosovo finish off this Nations League year with five points with their one win. Moldova finished last with just one point. Next up, Poland versus Netherlands. This is a massive match as Poland did have the opportunity to get that second place spot. But Nellen said, hell no, they managed to get two late goals, giving them a 2-1 win. Depay with the 77th minute penalty, and Wijnaldum with the 84th minute goal. And then the other match in this group, Italy versus Bosnia. Italy win this match 2-0. One goal in the first half, one goal in the second half. Bosnia not looking too impressive as they only had one shot on target. And looking at the group table, yeah, Bosnia finished dead last with no wins. A bit disappointing, but not many people did see they could get that far. This was a very tough group for them. Hopefully they'll do better in League B. Poland in third with seven points, Netherlands in second with 11, and Italy in first with 12. So yeah, Italy make it to the final four in the Nations League. Pretty impressive, and Netherlands almost got that spot. Now moving on to Hungary versus Turkey. Hungary win this match 2-0. Massive match for Hungary because this guarantees them that first place spot. They were battling with Russia. Russia, on the other hand, lose to Serbia 5-0. Not only does this not give Russia that first place spot after they've been doing really well this entire Euro run, which is why this result is so surprising. You wouldn't expect they lose 5-0 to Serbia, but that 5-0 result for Serbia 
guarantees them a third place spot by goal differentials against Turkey. So they still stay in this league. Turkey get relegated. They both really have the same amount of points. It really just came down to goal differentials, which is just absolutely crazy. Serbia really played their heart out to just stay in this league. Bravo to them. They had to do something this year because overall it's been a bit disappointing for Serbia. And I mean, what a result against Russia. Russia was really looking in form this whole time. And when you look at the stats, you'd think Russia would have gotten more goals, but Serbia just were way more clinical the entire match. Now I move on to England versus Iceland. England win this match 4-0. Another insane result. Declan Rice gets an early goal. Mason Mount gets another early goal. Iceland get a red card in the second half and then another two late goals from England, both from Phil Foden. But the other match in this group, Belgium versus Denmark, finishes 4-2. Tielemans with the early goal, Lukaku with the brace, and De Bruyne with the late goal. Looking at the stats, this match could have gone either way, but this is a massive result for Belgium as they make it to the final four. Denmark finished second with 10 points. Imagine if they took that final four spot. But then England finished third with also 10 points, and Iceland in last with zero. And then we move on to Austria versus Norway. Finally, Norway can play. This match finishes 1-1. Norway with a 61st minute goal, and then Austria with a 94th minute goal. A predictable result, honestly. Both these sides are pretty solid. And then finally, Northern Ireland versus Romania finishes 1-1 as well. Nothing too crazy to talk about here, and it's a bit of a shame because the Norway versus Romania fixture had to be canceled because one of the players got coronavirus. So here's the group standings, but it is unfinished. First First place for Norway is technically still up for grabs as only three points behind Austria. Well guys, that is the end of these Nations League match day reviews. Looks like you guys really enjoyed this series, so I'm glad you did. And these take me a bit of a time to edit, so any love is appreciated. Please hit that like button. Subscribe to this channel if you're new for more content. Let me know in the comments who you think will win out of the final four. We've got Spain, Italy, Belgium, and France. Definitely gonna do a reaction video to the predictions I placed. I know some of them are way off. So, yeah, looking forward to that. Hope you all are as well. And, uh, yeah, take care. Lock or notch.